Normally, we talk about early printing in a society. We talk today about Lima printing. In fact, Rhode Island emanates from a book. The colony of Rhode Island emanates from a, a Roger Williams' first book, A Key into the Language of America, which is, it's, a, it's many things, but it's also an Indian grammar. And he talks a lot about Indian food ways, and he talks a lot about clamps. There's an amazing section where he pulls back from the narrative and he talks about what it means to dig clams and how the women are, in fact, better diggers than, than the men. And he begins that section with a word, a, a phrase in Narragansett language I'd like to read to you, Nakami maich te aqua, which means first, eat something. <laughs> and clams is sikisiog. So um, fortified by that knowledge, I'd like to lead into the entertainment portion of the evening. Rich Rath flattered me tonight and said that when he was here in 1999, Norman had mentioned my obscure work and drums to him. And he and Walt Woodward and Karen Kupperman have really done amazing things, not only studying music, but uh, interpreting it and more importantly, playing it. So we, we have a very rare treat for you tonight. We're gonna hear them talk about and more importantly, play music. I, I'm interested in music and encounter situations where people don't have a language in which they can talk to others. And so what I've found is that in every situation, they sing and play instruments and sometimes dance. And the Europeans are always so gratified to find that the it, people they encounter on the coast of Africa or in the Americas or in Asia have exactly the same impulse. They think of it as a kind of universal impulse. Lescarbo said, I wrote in my tables part of what I heard, which is written there yet in these terms. Halouette ho ho hey hey ha ha, halouette ho ho he, which they repeated diverse times. One song being ended, they all made a great explanation saying, he. Solmization is a useful way of jotting down something one hears quickly, but it has some real limitations. While the melody of the tune is recorded, the time value for each note, the tempo, and the key are not. Yet what Lescarbo leaves us in this paragraph, in his account of three native tunes, is the only specific record we have of Eastern North American indigenous music from the early 17th century. I don't in any way pretend to be about to reproduce it for you now. But what I am going to do is fearlessly and unabashedly <clears throat> give you a 21st century Anglo-American history professor who used to be a country music songwriter's version of a 17th century French lawyer's version of a Micmac song. <laughs> spread across all of North America, and uh, the scene that I want to discuss took place probably in a setting smaller than this room uh, during a, a, an evening in Jamaica in 1688. So we take up a collection, we drive a bus, and we become the JCB 50th Anniversary Road Tour. It's just a thought. 